the problem-oriented medical record. The admission document you use for clerking patients in the medical assessment unit contains a problem list. This is part of the problem-oriented medical record concept which Lawrence Weed recommended in 1968. He analyzed the usually haphazard content of medical records and proposed a standardized structure in the form of problem lists and soap notes. This approach has been widely adopted on both sides of the Atlantic and now forms the basis of virtually all electronic healthcare systems. The problem list. Each medical record should contain a complete list of all the patient's problems, including clearly established diagnoses and all other unexplained findings that are not yet clearly attributable to a specific diagnosis. The problem list forms an index of everything that is wrong with the patient. The contents of the problem list might be symptoms, signs, abnormal laboratory or radiological findings, social burdens, or a previously diagnosed disorder. The problems can be further divided into active problems which require attention or inactive, otherwise known as resolved problems, which just need to be borne in mind while treating the patient as they could influence management. Dates when the problem started or resolved are important to document. If exact dates are not known, just specify the year. For example, hypertension with no date could mean new onset or could be many years old. Obviously, this has huge implications as new onset hypertension warrants full investigation, whereas hypertension that has been known about for 20 years would perhaps just need tweaking of the antihypertensives and checking where the target organs have been affected. Whenever the data warrant, the findings on the patient's problem list should be crystallized into a specific diagnosis. As you can see, the problem list is not static, but is a dynamic table of contents which can and should be updated in the light of new information. Before you are able to identify all the problems of a particular patient, you need to take a complete history and do a full physical examination. Once you have done the history and examined the patient, take five minutes to sit down and compile a problem list. Problems can come from any part of the database. History of present illness, past medical history, family history, social history, review of systems, physical exam, and laboratory studies. Observations combined from a number of different parts of the database frequently become part of a single diagnosis. The problem list is the table of contents of the medical database. Nothing appears on the problem list that is not found someplace in the medical database. And anything important in the medical database goes onto the problem list. Consider whether you have enough evidence to summarize the symptoms and signs under a diagnosis. For example, the patient complains of dyspnea and you find a cardiac murmur, a raised JVP and peripheral edema. Instead of placing all of these separately on the problem list, you would make the diagnosis of cardiac failure and enter this on the problem list. Having further investigated the patient, new evidence might suggest that the failure is due to cardiomyopathy. You would then update the problem list to cardiac failure due to cardiomyopathy. Problem lists 
should always contain verifiable facts. This is not the place for your differential diagnosis. The problem list should always contain the highest level of your current understanding of the patient's condition. The problem list documented by a junior medical student will differ from one done by an experienced doctor. However, both must contain facts at the highest level of available knowledge. The medical student may have a problem list with dull left lung base, bronchial breathing and fever. The doctor's problem list would be community acquired pneumonia of the left lower lobe. Both problem lists are correct as they reflect only facts and are formulated at the highest level of knowledge available to the respective individual. Compiling a problem list ensures that nothing is overlooked and that logical decisions can be made while taking everything that is relevant into context. You cannot fully understand or manage any problem in medicine without appreciating the context in which it occurs. Problem lists are particularly helpful in patients with complex problems. As Weed pointed out, there are never right or wrong single decisions in difficult cases. There are only intelligent and logical or unintelligent or illogical series of decisions carefully or carelessly followed. Everything we do to the patient as doctors should relate to some item on the problem list. All investigations should be done to clarify or better manage something on the problem list. Every drug prescribed should relate to a condition on the problem list. If this is not the case, we are either mismanaging the patient or do not have a complete problem list. The problem list is the most important aspect of your patient record. The order that problems are written on the list is not too important. However, it is good practice to put the most important problem or the problem that is most urgent on top of the list. The question of what goes on a problem list is a judgment call. The important thing is to include all problems which require attention and all problems which are relevant to the current illness episode. You should be able to easily defend the contents of your problem list in court if necessary. Once you have identified all the problems, you can then begin to consider a list of possible differential diagnoses. The differential diagnosis should be documented after the problem list has been completed. There is no place on the problem list for your differential diagnosis. Most patients will not leave the hospital having the same problem list as on admission. On each ward round or patient contact, you should check that the problem list is up to date. If it isn't, write out a new one. Progress notes. Progress or follow-up notes should broadly follow the SOAP mnemonic. SOAP stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment and Plans. The subjective part is what the patient or family member tells you. The objective part is your examination of the patient including laboratory or special test findings. Assessments are your thoughts, reasonings and conclusions and plans are what you are going to do with your patient in the light of the above. So, problem lists and soap notes have been shown 
to improve the structure of medical records, encourage logical thinking,